Hello, my name's Roger Hans. Today I'm over at Westland Country Park, which is only about 10 minutes walk away from me. So it's a great location during lockdown for me to come and do close up photography and things like that. Overnight we have a sharp frost, so today I'm using the little 60mm macro lens on the Olympus EM1 Mark III uh, and I'm just doing sort of photographing these berries that are covered in frost. The nice thing about using the Olympus Mark III or all the Olympus cameras is the image stabilising that's in the body. So I don't have to really worry about using a tripod and I can go in there nice and close with the macro lens. Today I'm shooting at f8, ISO 800. It's giving me about a 45th of a second, which is quite easily hand holdable with this lens combination. These are just a few pictures that I've taken just to show the back of the camera and also the finished picture what I was photographing. The last picture is actually put on a tripod, but that's just to show you the distance that I'm actually photographing from. This time I'm going to photograph these teasel heads. There's three of them there that are nicely lined up and make a nice composition. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to change the actual focusing range on the actual macro lens um, and take the picture. This is the focusing distance scale that's on the side of the 60mm macro lens. It will focus down to one to one magnification, which is lie size. So it's ideal for macro photography close up work. At the far end of the scale, it will actually focus to 0.4 meters to infinity. So in a lot of ways, it's an ideal all round lens because you can use it for portraits, general photography. Whereas with the previous picture, I was actually shooting at F8 this time, I'm going to be shooting at f4 because I want to throw the background as much out of focus as possible. You can see that the wind is starting to move the teasels about, um, so I can actually shoot at a slightly higher shutter speed to actually stop that movement because I'm shooting at f4, which will give me something like about 125th or 160th of a second. So when I'm photographing something like this, it's quite easy to do because I can get over the top of the subject, look through the viewfinder, compose a picture and take it quite easily. The problem comes when I'm actually photographing low down, along the length of the ground, because then I have to lie down on the ground to look through the viewfinder. With the Olympus, with the articulated screen, I can actually hand hold the camera very, very low, twist the screen up, look at the screen and take the picture. It makes life so much easier photographing low viewpoint images. So now I'm going to show some still images that I've taken with the 60mm macro lens on two or three different mornings um, it is important when you're trying to find subjects to photograph. Look for ones that subjects that are really isolated from the background so that you can throw the background nicely out of focus even if you're shooting at f8 or 5.6. On some of these still images I'm actually putting up the ISO, shutter speed and apertures just to give you an idea what you're actually photographing at. With this shot here, you can see it's really quite a severe frost. Um, New Year's Eve, 
um, we had a really very very strong hoar frost uh, and a number of these pictures would be taken on this occasion. It's important when you're looking for subjects try as I say try to find pictures where the background is a good three or four foot away from the actual main subject. Generally speaking people tend to go out and get a little bit excited taking the pictures they don't consider the, the backgrounds anywhere near enough. Backgrounds can make or mar a picture, so it's very, very important that you not just look at the subject, see you've got the subject in focus, but also make sure that the background is a decent size away, or decent distance away. Um, when you're going in photographing oak leaves like this, this was where I'd actually be using the macro lens set at one to one. Uh, on the focusing distance there, but if you wanted to get more of the plant in and step back further like on this shot, you'd probably need to change the focusing distance rather than one to one, uh, put it 0.4 to affinity. Um, important again, just think about the backgrounds, try and look for the best angle. I use the depth of field button quite a lot when I'm actually taking pictures. Um, remember that when you're looking through a viewfinder the aperture that you're actually taking the picture on can make a lot of difference to the finished picture. So focus on the subject and then just press your depth of field button to check that you're getting everything sharp and that the background is not too unobtrusive. When you're photographing something like this where you're actually looking down on grasses that are coated in frost Obviously the background doesn't really come into it here because it's so close there. You're actually photographing looking down on the ground. With this sort of thing I'd be shooting a, a second exposure of f8 and I've actually put the ISO up a bit to a thousand rather than 800 um, because the light had really started to go a little bit by this time. A second exposure is quite easily hand-holdable with the, the Olympus equipment. That's something I certainly wouldn't have considered doing with my old Canon lens without putting it firmly on a tripod. But it does help if you can look along the actual length of the ground, this little blade of grass there. Well, I've actually hand-holding this camera virtually about two inches off the ground. Uh, and it's throwing the background nicely out of focus. But always try and look for subjects where you've got a dark background because so particularly like with this frosted bramble leaves where you've got the dark background and they're coated in this hoar frost it really does make the subject stand out nicely. But look for patterns, look for little compositions. As I say, think about backgrounds because they are so important to the subject and a lot of people do forget things like that. With a shot like this of these lichens, it's important that you actually get them as sharp. There's quite a bit of depth of field to cover there. I'm shooting at f8, uh, it's still giving me enough depth of field to actually get the subject sharp, but throw the background out of focus. And this was that New Year's, e New Year's Eve that I told you about. We had a very, very severe hoar frost that night and we went out there to photograph. The important thing also is not just sort of the make sure you get some good pictures but think about your comfort. It's very important when you're going out in these sort of conditions that you must keep warm. You really need to wrap up warm, have fingerless gloves on because you will n never take good pictures if you're freezing cold and you're not comfortable. So make sure you're wrapped up warm enough and you know you'll you'll find that if you're warm you'll keep you'll take a lot better pictures again one or two shots just showing the aperture just give you a 40th of a second 5.6 i use 5.6 here because the background was reasonably close to these leaves and i did sort of take a shot at 5.6 and f8 just to see which one i preferred and it was this one was the best one because the background was more out of focus. But play around with it, look for different compositions uh, and enjoy taking pictures because these conditions really do sort of uh, make for good photography. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the, 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 the video and thanks for watching. Um, check out my website www.rogerhansfrps.com. Thank you for now.